The powerful Praetorian Guard of Rome was meant to keep the emperor safe. But if he didn't treat his bodyguards well and give them lots of money, they would turn against him. No emperor could avoid the Praetorian's anger. The blow that killed him came out of the blue. Caligula was leaving a theater in Rome when an armed young man walked up to him. The emperor knew all the Praetorian Guard officers, including the Tribune Cassius Chariot, so he had no idea that anything was wrong. Cheria asked the emperor what battle cry he had chosen for the night in his usual whistling voice, which Caligula often made fun of. But no one paid attention to the emperor's answer on this January day in the year 41 AD. The Praetorian quickly pulled out his sword and stabbed. As other officers who had been saved by the assassins came closer, the emperor felt the blank blade go through his throat. He was shot. At the same time that Caligula died in front of the theater, his wife and daughter were killed in the palace by another tribune. Regular Praetorians who didn't know what was going on were scared by the screams and ran around confused, not knowing who they were looking for. A guard named Grattan saw a pair of feet under a curtain all of a sudden. He tore the cloth away and stood in front of Caligula's uncle, Claudius. Scared, the man stood there, waiting to die. After just a moan of hesitation, Grattan bowed and praised Claudius as the new emperor of Rome. Then, he led his leader and a few other soldiers to the barracks in the garden, where no one could hurt him. The way was made clear for the emperor because of a plot by the Praetorians, and other Praetorians had chosen who would take his place. Everyone in Rome knew that from now on, the court was going to be a strong and dangerous player in the power struggle in the city. When Rome was still a republic 100 years before Caligula's death, everyone knew that soldiers were dangerous, so the army wasn't allowed to get close to the city. Only after winning big battles were the legionaries allowed to walk through the gates in a triumphal parade. So, when Gaius Octavian marched into Rome in 43 BC with a legion and his Praetorian cohort, without asking the Senate for permission, he broke the law in a big way. The Romans called a personal guard a Praetorian cohort, and powerful people hired them to protect themselves. A praetor was a general or governor, and a cohort was a group of 500 to 1,000 soldiers. Octavian had a good reason to go to Rome with a big group of guards. In 43 BC, he fought with other people for power. In a city where success could easily end with a knife in the back, the soldiers were Octavian's safety net. At the same time, the size of his army showed how strong he was. During bloody battles on the battlefield, the ambitious man beat all of his rivals with the help of his Praetorian team. In 31 BC, Octavian was finally able to take the name Augustus and set up the Roman Empire. The legions of the army still couldn't get into the city, but his own soldiers were a different story. The new leader of Rome needed more men to keep his power, so the court grew to nine cohorts. They stayed there for a long time in the capital. Compared to the legions, Augustus' Praetorian Guard was not an elite unit and didn't have a lot of veterans, and the new soldiers didn't get more training than other Roman soldiers. Loyalty was the most important trait for a Praetorian. People thought that Rome's own sons were more loyal than Romans from the provinces, so they joined the guards. At the same time, they had a lot of nice things. Praetorians were paid 50% more than legionnaires, and they only had to serve for 16 years, instead of the usual 25. During the first few years of their service, the guard wasn't even at war. A small group of Germanic mercenaries surrounded the emperor, but a group of Praetorians was always on guard in the palace Augustus built for himself on Rome's Palatine Hill. The rest of the corps did many other things in the capital and in a number of nearby towns. A very important job was to keep the peace at big public events. Rome's temperature could get dangerously high when there were gladiator fights, horse races, or even plays. Fans of famous actors could fight with each other over the smallest thing. In the worst cases, rival fans have died in the bloody fights. Just before he died in 14 AD, Augustus added three city cohorts to the Praetorian Guard. From then on, these three groups were Rome's police. The Praetorians and the cohorts Urbanus were both recruited in Rome in the area around the city. They had almost the same privileges, and the centurions came from the court. The city cohorts were in charge of keeping order in Rome, but the emperor still used the Praetorian Guard to fight all enemies of the state. Under Augustus's successor Tiberius, for example, a force was sent to southern Italy in 24 AD to catch a man who was about to start a slave rebellion. The Romans were always afraid that their many slaves would rise up against them. In this case, the troublemaker was quickly stopped because he used to be a Praetorian and was well known by those who were after him. 
Some of the guards' jobs were more shady, like being the secret police or even the emperor's killers. In AD 69, the Praetorians had already shown that they were a strong fighting force. The warrior emperors who ruled Rome at the end of the century continued to change the Praetorians from palace guards to an elite fighting force. For example, guards helped take over Dacian land in what is now Romania in the year 105 AD. But the Praetorians' new job didn't keep them away from all of Rome's long-running plots. In the year 193 AD, the Praetorians did even better than they had before. The Praetorians gave the title of emperor to a man named Pertinax, but instead of giving him a big reward, he tried to make his bodyguards follow strict rules. After just under three months in power, 300 angry Praetorians gathered outside the imperial palace. The Roman work Historio Augusta says, Pertinax went forward to meet them and tried to calm them down with a long, serious speech, but he got a spear in the chest in return. Through all of the Praetorian Guard's history, it was impossible to change. No matter what punishments and replacements the Roman emperors tried, it was still a threat to the life of the man the Praetorians were supposed to protect. The Praetorians were the worst enemy of the emperors for 250 years, until Constantine defeated the guard force outside Rome and put down the rest of them in 312 AD. By that time, the Praetorians were known as the most disloyal bodyguards in history. This brings us to the end of this video. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing and sharing so we can keep bringing more content like this. Also, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. See you next time.